Seven Days to Die can be a very, very hard game to play at times. You walk into a building and all of a sudden a horde turns around and starts smashing your face. Or you're just having a leisurely drive out in the desert and all hell breaks loose. So what you want to make sure is that you've got the right skills and skill points to actually beat the game with. Don't forget, these skill points you've worked hard for, so you don't want to spend them unnecessarily. And to change them, you'd have to spend 50k of your hard-earned dupes as well. So this is to go through all the skills that you probably want to avoid in the game. So thanks for watching, please subscribe if you like, and let's get on with it. Hi everybody, Cam here and hope you're feeling okay and well. Currently I've got a bit of flu, still with me, it's going on for two weeks. So if you guys are suffering out there of anything like cold, flu or anything really, can I just give you a massive virtual hug for a start. I know how hard it can be and it, it feels bloody terrible on my side, um, not getting much sleep. But anyway, enough of my worries so what we're going to do today well we're going to go through skill points but not the positive skill points like i've done in the past where well, you might see my videos saying how wonderful these skill points are but going through skill points that to be honest with you i don't understand why they're in the game because you can either bypass them doing something else or i they don't really bring anything into it now if you believe these are really good skills and you use them yourself then fair play but i'm just thinking of the new player you might want to avoid these from the start and put them into something else because the skill points are hard work to get. So the first one on the list is Ender Perception. If you go down, you can find one called Animal Tracker. Now the idea of this one is so that you can actually track animals on your map or actually on your compass at the top. So the way this works is you have to obviously put some into perception. But if we look at the first one, it's Trail Finder, Crouch Down and Use your keen eyesight to find the tracks of small animals like rabbits, snakes or chickens. So to bump this one up, you're going to have to put some more skill points into perception. Quite a few points. So as you can see in front of me, there's a rabbit. So if I crouch down, it should activate the checker or the catcher. As you can see, it don't bloody work. I can see you, but it don't bloody work. Oh, now it works. Brilliant. That took its time. Looking on the map, it tells me we've got a coyote or something over here, wherever that is, and also a rabbit. Oh, there he is. So it does work. Fuck her off. Yep, yeah, it's picked up the bear. Fantastic. So yeah, it does work. But the fact of the matter is, if you go around any of the roads, you're going to bump into things like chickens. Another chicken. Another chicken. There's bloody wolf there, see? Find a wolf. So to be honest with you, I don't think animal tracker's really worth sticking any points into. But it's up to you. So the next one's really gonna divide the crowd quite a bit, and that is still under perception, but this one's called Lucky Looter. Now Lucky Looter, if you look at it from the offset, you think to yourself, that's pretty cool. Because you can literally chuck one straight in and it adds five sent to loot bonus for containers that you open personally looting's 10 percent faster and you can go all the way down where it gives you 25 percent to loot bonus and looting is 80 percent faster now there is argument this doesn't give you better loot it might give you a little bit more loot but it won't give you better now there are a couple of things that will give you better loot without spending your points on so the first one is actually at your local trader and that's a vending machine. And it's called Eye Candy. What Eye Candy gives you is yes, you get your loot bonus, but you also get a plus 10% loot bonus on top of that. You don't need to put any skill points in. Another thing you can get is something called Lucky Goggles. You can find these, you can actually buy them from the trader. You can't make them, but these will also give you a loot bonus of plus four, which is still better than spending your hard earned skill points, I think. Still under perception, Javelin Master. 
Now I've never used it very much to be honest with you. It's nice that you can actually make a good old spear and this is what this is for. But if you put points into this you can craft better spears that do 10% damage right up to 50% more damage and have 50% more range. To unlock it all the way you've got to unlock the whole of perception which is a lot of points. And straight off the bat we can make an iron spear. Weck. Belly wise it's okay. Crap. But it all depends how good you are at throwing it. Personally, I think it's better to put all your stuff into making your crossbows a lot better. Especially as you can make exploding ones, which are bloody brilliant. And if you stick your points into good old archery instead of putting it into the spears, it means you can get 50% more damage. And if you add that to hidden strike, which gives you an extra 50% damage on sneak attacks, right up to 250%, is a much better combination. Six times sneak damage bonus. Don't bother with spears. Next on the list is under fortitude and it's the brawler. Now why in God's name would you want to punch out any animals or any of the zombies? I have absolutely no idea. All right, let's give it a go then. Again, to get this fully maxed out, I've had to max out the whole of fortitude. There we go. The other thing you can mix this up with is actually the bar brawling books if you can find them. They're not too difficult to find to be fair. And if you do it you can get 10% more damage with fists. Right down to gain 5% damage with each kill. So you could... What's the 7th curse? The 7th Amon Strike landed in a short time does 300% damage. Alright, well let's give it all the books as well. So there we are, we've got all the books. Now's the time to actually give it a go. Oh, here we go. Is somebody coming to say hello to me? How you doing, Fred? Let's give you a tap. Not sure still. Oh. He's still bloody going. This is on Scavenger. Yeah, I wouldn't bother with this one. I think I'll stick with the club. Time for a couple of quick ones. Under Fortitude, you've got the Huntsman. Can't see the point in this either. You can harvest 20% more resources from animals using any blade tool or weapon. You can put it all the way up to 100%. But to be honest, there's loads of chickens, there's loads of wolves, there's loads of everything around. And also, if you want food, you can go and buy it out of a machine. So up to you, but I wouldn't bother with that one. Well insulated. This is so that if you get cold or hot, it will actually give you 20% less food or water when cold or overheating. It gains 10% insulation. Right up to you can now handle severe weather or typically where the conditions are. Look. Go get yourself a puffer jacket if you're really cold. Otherwise, just put on a pair of shorts. You can find or make the clothes quite easily, so don't bother with this one either. Living off the land, if you want to be a farmer, that's up to you. But it's not as fun as it used to be, to be honest with you. Deep cuts means you can make better knives and do a little bit more damage. So if you have a look at the loading screen clues, it tells you there that axes are not the best choice for killing zombies. Blade weapons are not the greatest at all. And also bladed weapons are mostly used for harvesting things like animals and remains. So you really want to use blunt tools if you can, so I wouldn't use these skills. And finally for this list, we're looking under intellect and electrocutioner. Why are we looking at electrocutioner? Well, I don't know about you, but the stun button, it's a bit of fun, but it's not the best thing in the world, is it? I mean, I'd rather use a club and knock him down and kill him a couple of times, but the stun button doesn't do as much damage as a good old club. If you look at the club here, even a level 3 does melee damage of 27.6. Whereas if we compare the same type, you only get 14.4. So let's increase this up and see what we can end up with. Again, we've got to pump a load into intellect.
Oh, hello, there's one. How long will it take me to... Well, that wasn't too bad, I'll give it that. Oh! To be fair to it, we're doing alright so far. I like the way she dances. Alright, I might change my mind on that one. Might take it off the list. Give it a go, see what you think. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Hopefully for new people playing the game, this is going to put you off a couple of skills you really don't need to use. If you want to have a go at any of the skills that I have mentioned though, please do. And please comment below, because some people do use them. I'll catch you for the next one. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Love you.